bum 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 Hello there, I'm Creature Cal, and we're going to talk about dogs, man's best friend. They're everyone's favorite animal. If you don't like dogs, you don't exist. They are currently living in over 48 million households all over the U.S., including my family's. This is Skye, my grandparents' dog. He's 50% Chihuahua, 25% Bolognese, and 25% Mini Poodle, and 100% adorable. But how did we get here? How do we have all these dogs? Well, I can't answer that question. Let me reveal the origin of Doge. Let's travel back between 10,000 to 40,000 years ago, back when our ancestors struggled for survival against the forces of nature. Instead of buying the weekly groceries at the nearest stop and shop, we had to sacrifice our closest friends to take down the plumpest mammoth we could find. And that's assuming it wouldn't get stolen by the occasional Smilodon. Another carnivore our ancestors lived with was the gray wolf. Luckily, wolves generally avoided humans. High levels of stress hormones made them more skittish and fearful. However, some wolves had lower levels of stress hormones and were less fearful and more curious. They would get closer to humans and by doing so, discovered humans had a lot of free food that they could scavenge from. This is an example of Darwinism. Hello! Not you, Darwin! I'm talking about the bearded guy. Charles Darwin's theory was that evolution is driven through natural selection. And natural selection is when organisms best adapted to their environment are more likely to survive and reproduce. The adaptation of lower stress hormone levels gave wolves access to more food, which gave them a higher chance of surviving and reproducing. This favored adaptation would also be passed on to their offspring. After a few generations and a little bit of evolution, doge. Dogs would greatly help us out by cleaning up waste and warning us of predators. But this wouldn't be the end of the dog's evolution. Our ancestors would take it into their own hands by using the power of culling and artificial selection. Culling is the removal of members from a group based on a specific trait. In this case, humans killed off any dogs that showed unfavorable traits like aggression. The tamest dogs with favorable traits were bred, and so were their puppies. This is the process of artificial selection. This is when we humans decided what desirable traits will arise in a species. By culling the dogs and artificially selecting which traits we wanted for them, we ended up creating hundreds of different breeds, each bred for different purposes. To go into further details and examples, we're now going to listen to my associate and dog specialist, Canine Kim. Take it away, Kim! Hi, Cal. So, let's talk about dog breeds more specifically. We've already discussed how dog breeds came about from humans selectively breeding wolves for different purposes. But what does this mean for us today? The American Kennel Club currently recognizes seven groups of dog breeds, and this is how dogs are generally sorted today. These seven groups are... The Sporting Group the Hound Group, the Working Group, the Terrier Group, the Toy Group, the Non-Sporting Group, and the Herding Group. <coughs> now settle down, little guy, we'll get to you. Have some lamb in the meantime. All right, now that we'll be without interruption, let's delve into the different dog groups. The Sporting Group. This group of dogs was bred to assist hunters with retrieving the animals they've killed. This could include retrieving animals both on the land and in the water, but they generally only retrieve dead game. They are not a breed which actively hunts other animals, we'll get to those later. Sporting dogs are highly trainable, and for this reason they're often used to service dogs. What good boys and girls? Your sporting group winner at the National Dog Show was an Irish water spaniel named Sloane. <coughs> How cute! The Hound Group 
The hound group of dogs was bred to hunt warm-blooded animals. These are the dogs that are actively hunting and killing creatures. They are usually sleek and have long legs, fast speed, and wide vision. Although some are more tough and have a strong sense of smell. These dogs can hunt almost anything. They're even used to track escaped convicts from time to time. Some of the most common hound breeds are the Beagle, the Dash Hound, the Rhodesian Ridgeback, the Basset Hound, and the Bloodhound. The winner of this year's National Dog Show's Hound Group is Nate, the Tree Walking Coon Hound. <coughs> now that's impressive. The Working Group. These dogs were bred for a specific purpose, to help humans with their daily tasks. Their jobs can include pulling sleds and carts and protecting families, homes, and livestock. They're commonly large, strong, and intelligent. This is my dog, Reggie. He's an eight-year-old English Mastiff, and Mastiffs were bred as protectors and fighters. And since the mailman has never been able to successfully break into our house and steal all of our belongings, I think he's done his job very well. What a darling. Some of the most common breeds of working dog are the Boxer, the Rottweiler, the Siberian Husky, the Doberman Pinscher, and the Great Dane. The winner of the 2022 National Dog Show Working Group was Roos, the Alaskan Malamute. <coughs> the Terrier Group. This group of dogs was bred to pursue rodents and other vermin. They often have long legs used for digging out their prey. Some of the most common breeds of the Terrier group are the Miniature Schnauzer, the West Highland White Terrier, the Soft-Coated Wheaton Terrier, the Bull Terrier, and the Airedale Terrier. The winner of the National Dog Show Terrier group this year was the American Shaffordshire Terrier. However, I could not find this dog's name for the life of me. Please tell me in the comments what this dog's name was. I would love to know. The Toy Group now these dogs were bred specifically to be companions to humans. They really are man's best friend. They are commonly small and very affectionate. The winner of the toy category of this year's National Dog Show was Cooper, the English Toy Spaniel. <coughs> Aww. The non-sporting group. Now, this group is interesting because there are actually very few common characteristics between them. The AKC states, the breeds of non-sporting group have two things in common, wet noses and four legs. These are just dogs that don't fit very neatly into the other categories. This is where our very own Doge fits in. The Shiba Inu is a non-sporting dog with its origins in Japan. It was brought to the United States only about 60 years ago and was recognized as an official dog breed in 1992. The breed has gone on to become the iconic Doge that we know and love today. Some other common non-sporting breeds are Bulldogs, Poodles, the French Bulldog, the Boston Terrier, and the Brigeon Frise. Winner in the non-sporting category in the National Dog Show this year, as well as the overall winner of Best in Show, was Winston, the French Bulldog. Look how happy he is! Sweet, sweet, sweet yeah. And now, the herding dog. <coughs> I asked you to hold on a moment, I'm trying to record a video. <coughs> <sighs> now these dogs were, of course, bred for herding. They were bred to move livestock such as sheep, cattle, and even reindeer. They are highly intelligent, highly responsive, highly energetic, and highly trainable. Some herding dogs are even now trained for police work. Some common breeds of herding dog are the Old English Sheepdog, the Shetland Sheepdog, the Belgian Malinois, the Cardigan Welsh Corgi, and the Collie. National Dog Show Herding Group was River, the German Shepherd. Well, that's all for now. Back to you, Cal. <coughs> hey! Thanks for sharing, Kim. We sure have a lot of dogs. All of them exist because we gave the species a chance to coexist with us. In the end, I think we both benefited from our alliance. It's truly amazing how we were able to take evolution into our own hands. Well, that's it for this episode. As I always say... Ah! Darwin, go away! Ah! Oh no, he has an ambitious election! Ah! Huh? Thank you for watching this video. Please hit that like button and subscribe for more awesomeness.